Hello everyone, this will be a video of the Simplex 4904-9053. It's a remote light and it's a ceiling mount light. As you can tell, the fire lettering is printed this way and it's sideways. Now normally if you would have your typical horizontal strobe like the 4903-9101 I showed you back in February, your fire lettering would be printed this way. So I figured I would clear up that differentiation. Now if this were a wall mount vertical strobe, your fire lettering would be printed down this way. Well, the words would be, the letters would be upright, but you'd have the let words still going down that way. So let's take a look at the device, shall we? So normally on the ceiling, if you had it mounted on the ceiling, you'd probably have it mounted like this. Well, you'd probably see it like this, rather. Let me just focus that. There you go. I'll zoom out. There you go. It's on the Inviso ceiling. Now if you were looking up at it, you'd probably see it like this. Again, let me focus. Kind of interesting they didn't put any fire lettering on this side. All you see is the fire lettering here and the fire lettering on the other side. Well, it's upside down, but like that. Now interestingly enough, like the uh, 4903-9101, your info tag is actually taped onto the wire. So I'm just going to zoom in here. Now, I will point this out to you. This is a 120 volt AC device. So this is actually the first AC device I will be testing in one of my videos. As you can see, 120 volts AC, 60 hertz, basically wall current here in the United States. Well, basically North America. Now, it's a whopping 0 .32 candelas, too. Like I said, typical bulb. Now, here's the other side of that tag. It's just uh, information about where it's, who made it, that sort of thing. Now here's the back itself. I'm going to zoom out. I have no idea what that JM stands for. Probably means something. And I'm actually going to pop this off just so I can show you the bat, what it's like. Doesn't seem likely to break, but you never know. See you. You uh, put the plate onto the box first and then snap it in. So that's how that works. You can see the wire leads. It's basically nothing too special, just a bunch of lights in here. I actually opened this up at one other time. There's actually two other lights. I don't feel like popping it off right now. So this is all you see. Well, here's the circuit board right here. So let's pop that back in. See, oh, there's your mounting holes right here. And let's see what it does. If I could get this thing to stand upright now. <laughs> Alright, that'll do. Now here comes the fun part of the video itself, actually testing the device. Now because this is a 120 volt AC device, I have this hooked up to a power cord and I will technically be plugging it in directly into the wall. Now a word of caution, as I did just mention, I will be plugging it into the wall. The a device like this, anything that's 120 volts AC, it's very high voltage. Well, not very high, but it's high voltage, and it could injure you if not used pro properly. I know what I'm doing here. I'm somewhat experienced with 120 volts AC to the point where I could do it safely. So that's what you're seeing here. And if you can kind of see from the reflection down there, I have wire nuts attached to this, so I'm doing this safely. There's no exposed contacts whatsoever. So, without further ado, let's actually plug it in. Three, two, one, three, two, one, and... Yeah, it's basically a night light. So, let's turn off the overhead lights. Obviously, it's not very bright, but it's a typical light bulb, so what could you expect? Let's turn on the main lights again. And here we go. To activate this light with the pull station, I will be using a Simplex rebranded RSG T bar. It's the RSG RMS T1T. RMS 1T. So Basically speaking, believe it or not, these RSG T-bars can in fact support 120 volts AC. Now, I would have used my 4251-20, but I don't have an appropriate switch for it, so I cannot 
do 120 volts AC with that. Let's pull it. And let's reset it. Push it up. Whoops. Sorry, the spring's a little bit broken in this thing, so I have to jiggle it myself. Now, you may have noticed it just shut off. Now, I don't know if there would be, one of these would be set up on a panel. It would just probably hook, be hooked up to the switch itself. But anyways, if you reset it, it would probably just reset. So, there you go. There's that. I'll show you on, on the inside where to look. Now, if you look in there, here's your uh, RSG label. This has th a 3 amp rating with 120 volts AC. So it doesn't seem likely you would be able to use this as like a typical light switch. It, that would have to be like 15 amps. But this can support AC. This is a low current device. So there you go. And there's your data label right there for the pole station. And just to prove to you, I'm flipping the switch. Now, just to show you one more uh, safety thing I have, I have the uh, co contacts in this box right here, all the connections, so I don't get zapped accidentally. So, let's reset that. As long as I don't go t stick my finger too deep in the, uh, the hole there, I'm good. And let's zoom out. So I hope you enjoyed this video of my Simplex 4904 9053, my very first 120 volt AC commercial fire alarm device, not counting that smoke detector I tested on leap day, but it's my very first 120 volt AC commercial fire alarm device, it's a cool light, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, that'll be it.